Hello, everyone. I'm really pleased to be involved in this um, this discussion this morning. Um, happy social prescribing day. I agree with that. That's really good. Um, so I'm, I'm Ewan King. I'm the, the deputy chief executive of an organization called Sky. It's a national charity. It's been around for about 20 years and is devoted to evidence-based improvement in adults and children's social care and support. And um, our role in this project was really twofold. Firstly, we were asked to consider how across a local place or across a local system we could ensure that all the key organizations were working together aligning their activities investing strategically in developing communities and enhancing the role of social prescribing so how can we work together uh, across a very complicated system um, and, and make the most of what of the of the scarce resources that we have available we were also involved in uh, in bringing together people from across uh, Wakefield and York to discuss with them this um, this key issue about how about what factors um, um, encourage alignment across community strengthening activities such as social prescribing but also community development and, and community capacity building so what what encourages that to happen we had a number of interviews with people in Wakefield we ran a, a workshop in, in York, and we explored those issues in, in some depth, and it was really um, revealing and helpful. We also looked at what barriers uh, were getting in the way, but also what enablers were supporting um, a more aligned, more coherent uh, approach. And we were also, as I've said, looking at um, looking at uh, what measures um, we need to, to 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 consider if we're going to understand fully the impact of our work in this in this era area. Um, we would. Um, we then moved on to to um, bring together some some practical recommendations, and I'm going to discuss some of those uh, shortly. But there's a lot more in the in the in the annex report that we that that is part of the suite of documents that are now available, um, and um, those I hope are, are really are really helpful. Um, and finally, we we have. Um, suggested a range of measures mostly used within York and uh, Wakefield but some of them used elsewhere um, as, as, as measures that you can consider using it as you develop your local measurement and evaluation frameworks. So um, that's what we've been up to. Um, so as um, I think Meryn just alluded to in her, her presentation that the, the, the landscape out there in terms of health and social care policy is, is, is changing rapidly and has changed already this 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 year so we we had in february a new white paper a new health white paper which places integrated care systems or ICSs on a statutory footing and will create um, in local areas nhs ics boards and health and care partnerships we still are going to have health and well-being boards which have a critical role in coordinating and also adding accountability a democratic accountability over how we plan and, and deliver health and social care we have had in place for a while now primary care networks, although they're still really in their infancy, um, but they have a crucial role, um, particularly in relation to social prescribing link workers uh, and, um, and investing in that area. Um, social prescribing link workers, obviously a, a critical part of the picture. And, and I'm sure James, when he comes on later, will we'll touch on this. It's, it's, it's something that's continued to expand um, across England. Community-based support organisations, community capacity building, charities um, of various descriptions, voluntary organisations of various descriptions all have a crucial role to play at the heart of this. And finally, community anchors. And I know that um, Anna has been working with her colleagues in Wakefield to develop uh, community anchors. They've, um, they've struggled a bit over the last year for obvious reasons, but they are um, really a, an important part of the picture so these are you know organizations centers within local communities that provide a range of services and access points into into care health and care so considering that context um uh, what are the what are the key lessons that we could were able to draw out from from our from our strand of activity well first first of all i think it's important not to see this as a blank sheet of paper uh, and start and, and certainly we're not starting from scratch there's a lot of good activity that's going on in every community uh, in every place in england um, and in many parts of the country there have been social prescribing schemes and, and, and programs for many years there's been community connectors there's been a lot of investment in community development and we need to build on all of that and go where the energy is um, so don't try to, to reinvent everything. There's a lot of really good stuff already happening. 
Um, the second uh, issue is really about governance and making sure that there are people from the community, pe including people with lived experience, but also people from the voluntary and community sector who are critically involved in decision making and, and have, a, have a say at the keyboards that I've mentioned earlier, because um, they're going to be where a lot of the decisions are taken. I think um, it's important as well um, that um, in developing plans for local areas, we think beyond the traditional boundaries of health and social care. And I think um, Sean mentioned earlier that in, that, that in York, and I, I was at the same workshop, it was really impressive to see a, a person from the police, a person from housing, a load of different people from the, the community at that meeting. And that shows that they're beginning to think beyond the boundaries of, 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 of you know, statutory health and, and, and social care. There's a lot more going on out there and we need to sort of tap into those resources and assets. Um, I, think, um, I think Kim mentioned this, this earlier, right at the beginning, it's really important to have a clear framework and guiding sets of set of principles for this work. Um, so in 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 York, they have a community operating model that really guides all of their planning and commissioning in relation to community work. It's very much joined up with the agenda that that the NHS is taking forward. And similarly, in 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 uh, Wakefield, they're part of a very forward-thinking integrated care system, and they've they've got really clear frameworks for how they're trying to build and develop communities. And um, finally, there's a whole role of um, important role for commissioners and Meron touched on this um, to, to really change the shape of commissioning, redesign, redesigning commissioning intentions, frameworks, contracts, so that they, they support the investment in volunteers, in the VCSE and, and in other parts of the community. So if you look at somewhere like, uh, well, if you look at uh, Wakefield, they have a, a small grants program, which is uh, really helping to keep many small uh, charities and voluntary organizations alive and, and thriving during what is a very difficult period for everyone. So uh, yes, I should have said at the start, the second part of the work that we're doing is looking at measuring impact. Um, what what are local areas and particularly the York and Wakefield doing to think about their overall impact, not just for their own part of the, se the sector, but for the whole local place. And that's part of having that overarching framework. So we found that there was um, general support for having an agreed local set of, of common measures across that place that really can help you understand as a whole system how you're doing in terms of developing the community. So Wakefield, a combination of quantitative and qualitative measures have been developed. Some of those validated measures like the Edinburgh Warwick Wellbeing Scale, which is used across social prescribing. Um, through to much more qualitative measures and, and sort of experimental measures really around volunteering, loneliness and social isolation. But it's, it's starting to help them produce some really robust evidence of how they're making progress. York um, have a similarly a, a set of measures which are very helpful. What is really important, I think, in their measures, they've reached, they've reached out to the NHS and made sure that some of the measures really resonate with the NHS. So, for example, appoint, GP appointment times, um, non-elective admissions into hospital. They, they, these are important to the NHS and big drivers of cost. If you don't tap into what the NHS is thinking is important, they, you're going to miss an opportunity, I think. Um, inequality. Um, Warwick, uh, sorry, not Warwick, um, Wakefield is, is beginning to, to develop a set of indicators around inequalities, particularly looking at social deprivation. But I think there's further we can go in terms of Black and minority ethnic communities, people with learning disabilities, people with mental health uh, conditions. I think there's real scope there to do much more than that because I think equality has to be one of the themes that undercuts everything that we're doing. And finally, as, as I've mentioned, it's really important um, to, to make sure that everything you're doing does resonate with the NHS. They're a big funder, they're a huge player, um, and like it or not, are, are, are a critical player in, in, in delivering this. And we have to, you know, have to build in uh, measures that actually resonate with GPs, with, with consultants, with, with CCGs and with, with NHS trusts. Uh, final slide for me. I will not go into all of this in detail, but we have started to develop a bit of a framework of measures, drawing mainly from, from Warwick and York, but also from other national good practice. And we've really identified four domains. These may not be the only domains. They're the ones that we think are, uh, are important, but there might be other things that we're missing. First domain is about com building community strengths and assets. There's a whole set of potential measures around that. Health and well-being, I think this is where you're drawing on some of the classic health and social care measures like ASCOF, 
which is the adults framework, outcome framework, and also some of the NHS data, like delayed transfers of care, for example, GP appointment times. And then um, the third area is enhancing community connections. I think there's some really good measures around social isolation and loneliness that can be adopted. And then finally, reducing inequalities. I think this is the area we've got to do most work, to be honest, but there are some measures that are, are helpful and I think Wakefield is pointing the way forward there. So that's really it for me. Um, thank you very much for your time.